Desk Lady Ada. Hey everybody and welcome to my desk. It's a nice Sunday evening. We had a wonderful long weekend together. Went for some nice long hearing done. Before yeah. we jump into that, is there any news or updates from Mr. Lady Ada? No, there so. is no Emmy category for live electronic show yet, but maybe the Academy will reconsider I know. Um, next year. Okay, well, a um, couple things. I did, I did have a kind of STEMA Saturday, STEMA Sunday. Um, so let's go to the computer and I can show off what I did. Um, so one of our oldest products that we have is our seven segment backpack. This is a board that takes a seven segment display and, and you know, gives an I squared C um, breakout to connect. I really love the chip that's used here, the HT16K33. Uh, unfortunately, it went up in price but for a while. It was really cheap. It was like a buck or so. And uh, it's really great because it's, it's designed for driving uh, matrix LEDs, like seven segments or eight. It does up to 16 by eight uh, monochrome segments. It doesn't do PWM per LED, but it does do full dimming for the whole thing. And, and for many people, this is a great way to, to quickly add, um, you know, a seven segment display like this, because these are old style photos, um, a seven segment display like this to their uh, design um, over I squared C. We've got code in Arduino. It's in Python. It's very easy to use. Um, and as we're going back in time, we are um, also redesigning these boards to add STEM IQT, plug and play connectivity. Um, so this board is the one that we did this weekend. Actually, we did this a while ago, but we finally got to test it. So what we tried to do is actually have it be the exact same size and the same like pinout and shape and the holes in the same, you know, even though I would have done it differently if I was redesigning it. It's such an old board, I didn't want to mess up people's existing uh, designs or layouts if they used, um, you know, the same mechanical shape. Uh, I just wanted to add, um, you know, again, uh, break out to the bottom. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show. This did board I actually did uh, redesign. So this is what it looks like. And I have the stomach QT ports pointing out. And I think that's fine and good because uh, that way you can stack them edge to edge and you'd have a little cable going between them. So just, uh, it, you know, doing a little blinking demo. You can see it's counting up uh, very slowly. And then to make it easy to test, I, I also made it so I can remove the uh, seven segment display here. Um, I just socketed it. Um, but so far so good. And then I've also got, there's a couple other uh, boards that are similar. So this is the seven segment. There's also an alphanumeric, you know, hex segment, um, starburst, starburst style. Um, if you go to the overhead, it's uh, so alpha numeric. Yes, yeah, so this is the alpha numeric backpack. If I can go to the computer. Um, this is the alpha numeric backpack. So it's actually almost the same size as the seven segment. Uh, and so I actually thought like this would be a good opportunity for me um, to not just uh, uh, set this up to be. Um, also STEM IQT, but also maybe I can make the back be the same exact uh, layout. So, you know, even though the, the display is different, maybe the, the panel um, would have the same um, layout for the SMT components, and that way you could use the same SMT program and also the same um, stencil, uh, which is very handy. Um, I like to share stencils between designs. They're not expensive, but, you know, it's just like one less thing uh, that you have to stock and deal with. Um, and that, you know, having it be the same layout is, is also kind of nice. Um, so this is for that uh, dual, uh, you know, two times two, so quad alphanumeric display. And then there's also the um, 8 by 16 mini, which looks like, let's see, uh, HT16. I think I have a breakout for, maybe I didn't make a breakout for the... Uh, Oh, maybe it's 16 by 8. Oh, yeah. So there's the large 16 by 8, and then I think I did a mini version. Maybe I only did it for the Featherwing. I guess I only did it for the Featherwing. So maybe I would, I would design that so I could make a, uh, a 16 by 8, and not just with the, you know, these large pixels. This is kind of a chunky-sized one, but maybe one with the smaller... Uh, pixel display as well for people who wanted to. Because again, it's almost the same 
you know, size. I kind of made feather wings of all, all three, and, and they all kind of ended up the same size. So, um, so that'd be cool. And uh, so working on that, you know, it's an old design, but redesigning it. And then I also thought, um, I was doing a project over the weekend that I wanted to get some uh, analog input. And um, I was like, oh, I wanted to get some audio input uh, you know, through analog, not through PDM or through uh, I2S. And so I was like, oh, you know, let me look at my, um, you know, my, I had some a MEMS mic breakout. And so I was actually uh, using this in a project and I realized that when I designed this, I didn't add an amplifier to it. And I was like, oh, I should really redesign it to add an amplifier because it's, it's only like 100 millivolts peak to peak and that's a little bit annoying. Um, so I thought I'd redesign it. And then as I was redesigning it, I was like, you know, I should really make it uh, stemma friendly so you can plug it in with cables really easily. That's, you know, one of the things that when we were doing um, the, you know, brain uh, craft machine learning project with, with the uh, uh, Pi badge is that I want, I, you know, I didn't have an easy way to just like plug in a microphone. Um, we had to kind of do this weird solder cable thing. And so I was like, oh, I should redesign it to be uh, stemmified. So um, I did that too. So I have two versions. Uh, this one is the Max 4466. It's a, um, you know, an electric mic version. I do like electric mics um, in some cases. I think MEMS do a really good job, but um, I do feel like the an electric plus a Max 4466 can give you a really good wide range um, audio input, especially since MEMS mics tend to kind of tap out at um, 10 kilohertz, and these will give you up to 20 kilohertz. And then I... Um, so that's a that's a stem uh, you know plug and play version of, of the Max four four six six, and then I also did a uh, breakout. Uh, it's a simple you know, this one's simpler, but for the SPW uh, two four thirty MEMS mic. So again, you know, have a JST cable for quick plug and play, and if I leave the JST off, it's 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 a breadboard friendly. Um, got the um, LMV three fifty eight op amp here, uh, MEMS mic, and a three volt regulator. Uh, these MEMS mics, that's another thing, the MEMS mics really need three volts. You need to have to have regulator in case you're powering them from five volts. But then this, you know, gives me, um, you know, 100 times gain. This is actually uh, copy and pasted from the uh, circuit playground design. They were the classic circuit playground that used an analog mic, um, which worked quite well. Uh, you know, I just didn't, um, when we got to the circuit playground express, um, I could use PDM, and so it's it's much cheaper and easier to use PDM than analog. But again, you know, analog is is when you need analog input, you want analog input. And um, I've noticed that you know it's it's rare to see a, a MEMS mic uh, breakout like this. It's a lot of people go with Electret because it's cheaper, but you know, MEMS th there are some benefits to it. So that's kind of what I'm designing. Are there any questions yeah. before we head on? One of the questions we were working on a ESP thirty two S two and a TFT version of it still working on this yeah it's um just waiting for some parts to come in but yeah there's it's mm -hmm. still in the design queue um we have some designs where um we know there's going to be some parts issues so we gotta wait mm. yeah. yeah okay you want to go to the research yeah all right here we go let's go where in the world is that part i need The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady Ada uses her power of engineering and more to show you how to find things on DigiKey. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search of the week this week? Okay. This week, uh, so I was doing some analog MEMS mics projects, and uh, I wanted to make a breakout for uh, an amplified MEMS microphone. I like MEMS mics because, of course, there's no hand soldering. You can pick and place them. Um, they're very small compared to electric mics. And, um, you know, you don't need to bias them. The circuitry is, is sometimes a little simpler because they just kind of give you analog output. We also have done a lot of PDM mics and I2S MEMS mics. Um, those are really nice because, you know, you, you get a little microphone and gives you digital output. But there are some times when you really want an analog output, like a true analog waveform. Um, and in that case, yeah, you need to go with, with the MEMS design. Nothing's going to be as, as uh, for pick and placing, um, nothing's going to be as simple as just uh, you know, a, a simple tin can style MEMS microphone with a little amplifier. Um, and there's no hand soldering, which I'm trying to avoid in this design. Um, so we do have a, a breakout that is unamplified for the SPW 2430. At the time when this came out a couple years ago, 
Uh, do you want to go to the computer? Yeah. Uh, when this came out, um, you know, this is a, a nice little MEMS mic. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite simple. You give it power, there's a three-volt regulator, and then you get AC-coupled or DC-coupled output. The only problem is, yeah, this is only 100 volts, you know, peak to peak. So I want to re redo this design. I've kind of meant to redo this in a while, and, and I'm finally getting to it. Um, but the bad news is that when I went to uh, order these uh, to just check in on them to make sure that they were available, they are in stock. Uh, but they're NRND, so not recommended for new designs, which, you know, there are 97,000 stocks. So it's not like I can't use this. Um, and I think, uh, you know, this is something that I'll be able to purchase for a bit. But, um, you know, it, I don't want to design it. If I'm going to design a new design, you know, I'm going to see if there's anything else available. Uh, so don't get stuck in two or three years having to do a respin. I might as well. You know, like a MEMS mic is a MEMS mic. I don't feel like there's any one that's particularly better than the other. Um, so let's find an alternative to this that is available. Um, so I definitely want it to be a MEMS analog mic. Remember, there's there's three types of microphones you can get in MEMS. You can get I2S, PW, PDM, and analog. And I2S and PDM are more expensive in specialty. Um, analog is is usually very inexpensive. You see, these are you know fifty cents or so. Um, I don't actually care too much about you know the shape or anything. There's different sizes and packages, but they're all going to be about the same. I don't really care about the signal noise ratios. Is something very simple. Um, normally, I would pick omnidirectional, but there are it just that's not a, a specific thing. And also, the frequency range can change. So, I think I'm just going to look for any. MEMS analog mics, and then I'm going to look for only the active ones for this for this new design. Um, so let's see. There's a couple options. Looks like uh, you know there's some that are in stock, some that are not in stock. A lot of that are bottom ported. Um, I think I want a top port design. A top port design looks like this, where there's a hole at the top. Uh, bottom port looks like this, where that you have to have a hole in the PCB and audio goes at the bottom. That's that's good when you want something flush, but in this case, I don't I don't think I really need that. I kind of like this top. I kind of like a top ported design. Um, so let's select for port location top. Let's go with top. And then let's also go with the normally stocking. And um, so it looks like there's a lot of options here, which is really nice. Again, these are kind of generic. There's, you know, this is sort of looks like a weatherproof version. There's this kind, there's this kind. Um, looking at, you know, the ranges, it looks like, you know, I can do 20 to 20 kilohertz. That's kind of cool. And uh, they're all going to be three volts. Um, but, you know, you're going to pay more for for fancier. So let's let's sort by price and see what we get. So there's a couple, oh, I think this is maybe a, let's not look at marketplace. It's okay. okay. Uh, avoiding the marketplace looks like CUI devices has this one. And then uh, there's also this one. This one looks kind of good to me because it's both inexpensive and um, there's 370,000 in stock, which is always a nice look. Everything else, there's about 2,000 in stock. Um, I like it when there's a lot available. This looks like a pretty standard one. And what's also nice is it looks like the pad out on the bottom is actually kind of similar to the pad out here. Like it's got the four pads, um, which is pretty cool. So I can, you know, use this and I'll check the the dimensions, but hopefully it'll it'll be about the same. So let's uh, let's open this up. Oops. And then comparing it to this component. So this one is a three by 0.1 by 2.5 millimeters. This one is 3.7 by three millimeters. So it's a little bit wider and a little bit taller, but I think I could probably have the pads fit either, which would be kind of nice. So I could start with maybe the parts I have in stock now and then adapt up to um, this other, the SPU part. And then um, another thing that was kind of neat is there are um, different, if you don't do the top port requirement, 
Um, so let me get rid of the port location. I still want to exclude marketplace. Um, there are a couple of cool ones. Like I saw this one. There was a 80 kilohertz microphone. It's bottom ported, but this is kind of cool because it can do, um, you know, ultrasonic, uh, high frequency noise. So it could be good for, um, you know, recording. You know, you could record high frequency noises that normally microphones are filtered out. They're usually kind of a window filtered from 20 to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, but if you want to make like a back detector, um, this microphone's pretty cool. So this is not what I'm going to use. I might make a different breakout for this, this back detector. But I thought it was neat that um, there is there is a uh, MEMS mic that can go up to 80 kilohertz. So that's you know, bats are getting a bad rap lately. So, um, I mean, maybe we got to start detecting bats more. Yeah. It's like the new the new Batman. What else uh, can you use it besides to? I don't know. I bats? think it, I think it said it was for like effects, like if you like it was for detecting sounds because you in and maybe uh, far field. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it was a little bit weird. unclear exactly what it's for. It could be military use or, um, you know, military high bats. high frequency signaling. You know, there was the um, the Wi-Fi chip from uh, Amazon that would use high frequency signaling to uh, to set yeah. the Wi-Fi access point. And because you can you can send very high frequencies and this would be able to detect them uh, mm -hmm. stuff that you know even for humans we can't really hear very well uh, close to 20 kilohertz you know we can't especially as we age we start on not being able to hear uh, over like 10 or 15 kilohertz um, this could be interesting so this is not my the product I'm going to use but I thought it was an interesting yeah. part so it's kind of cool I could see us uh, I mean you know we can't we'll get in trouble on Twitter if we start like making stuff that uh angers a person so we just got to be careful with that but that, I, I think there's some good ideas there okay okay all right well that's the great search okay it's a great search where in the world is that part i need the great search with dj king all right and okay. that is the show for tonight all right super super easy we yeah got, we just got straight to the point yep Thanks, everybody, for we'll watching. See everybody during the week, normal week of shows. Uh, no Pedro hosting show and tell this week. Uh, we'll be on Ask an Engineer. We have JP's product pick. We have JP's workshop, Scott's deep dive, 3D hangouts, all the things, Colin's lab notes and more, all week on the Adafruit News Network. <laughs> Anne. Thanks, right. everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.